How's it going? How's it going, Cappy? Looks like you've been busy today, catching up on all of those VODs that you yeah, 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 needed to catch up on. Look at this, the title screen changed. Now Skeevy Dude got added to the title screen. I like, I love dynamic title screens that change over the course of playing a video game. That's always a very cool thing that I, I like uh, that happens. Uh, how's it going, Jetstorm? Uh, like, like, my favorite series to do, like, the updating with the story, um, title screen thing is the, the, the Trails of Cold Steel games. Uh, those, those do an, a remarkable job of, of updating with, like, all of the events that have happened in the games. Stopping by to say hi! Hey! Yeah, this this game is really good so far. I'm I'm really really enjoying it. Um, I already I, I think I I think I can already make a pretty big recommendation of it. I I I've I think the story has shown me enough confidence in the way that it's writing itself that I think it's gonna stick the landing. You obviously don't want to jinx it, of course, but Mario Kart 64 because uh. Uh, so what happened yesterday? Oh boy, a lot. So if you want to play this game now, you might want to parachute out because we got we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of recap and then we're gonna jump in. Yesterday, uh, we we successfully killed our second victim. Worked out. We were gonna have a moment in the bathroom and it it went away. It went away. Oh no, is she already bored? Is she already bored? Man, it doesn't like killing people. Just doesn't get her there anymore. Uh, we met a skeevy dude in the library. Uh, turns out he works at a morgue. Uh, we learned some very distressing things about our good pal Aoi. Um, that the 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 harassment that she that has befallen her uh, happens to be from a family member. Uh, we also learned that Norco obviously has feelings for her that go much deeper than friend, but. They, they're not exactly returned, but it wasn't like, oh, like, you know, like they had that talk and, you know, anything bad happened between them. It's just, you know, maybe not where Aoi wants to be right now. Waiting for someone to say the word corpse factory to really sell you on the game. Look, well, we're going to, I imagine, get access to a morgue. I can't imagine these characters standing together in a morgue and that not being a thing. So there is a lot of potential there for somebody to utter the words corpse factory so let me oh you know what give me like 30 seconds i forgot my stream juice Ladies and gentlemen, stream responsibly. You must have stream juice on hand at all at all times. Whether you have hydrate redeems or not, it's very important. Stream responsibly. Yeah, like I'm definitely getting this soundtrack. I have enjoyed it quite a bit so far. Uh, so I will definitely be picking up the soundtrack. This game's got a lovely soundtrack. Just, just really, really, pers really pressing all the right buttons. All right, let us, let us jump right back into things. Here we go. Buckle your seatbelts, everybody. Let's do it. My alarm erupts with a shrieking scream and scares me awake. My eyes don't open immediately, and instead I find myself tossing and turning, trying to bury my face in my pillow. I can't have had more than two hours of sleep, and now it's already time to get up and go to work. How the hell am I going to function today? Boy, this is like the most relatable this game's been for a while. 
I drag my heavy body from the bed and slide into a pair of slippers resting on the floor. With a yawn and a stretch, I leave my bedroom. Lots of coffee. Well, she is an avid coffee drinker, so I imagine that she is that, that, that type of person that needs that morning boost. I stand in the kitchenette connected to the living room for a few moments, completely absent-minded. I open the refrigerator and stare blankly at, the dis at its dismal contents. A small tub of peach yogurt sits on the top shelf, and a half-empty jug of oolong tea rests at the bottom. I grab the yogurt and peel off the lid. Without even fetching a spoon, I simply pour it into my mouth. Let's go! We're going full gremlin mode. I consume about half of the tiny portion and wipe my mouth before throwing the leftovers in the trash can. That'll be enough to spike my energy for the morning. When you normally run on an empty stomach, any amount of calories can work as a pick-me-up. I make a mental note to collect two or three cans of coffee from the convenience store on my way to work. See? Yeah, she's loading up today. They should carry me through the rest of the day. The rest of the early morning is spent applying makeup and getting dressed. I'm out the door at the same time as every other day. It's, it's worrying. Yeah, the fact that she eats so little is uh, a little worrying and, 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 and concerning, so yeah. Maybe they'll address that, I hope they do. She didn't seem too interested when other people brought it up, but other people brought it up in kind of real dickish ways. To stop myself from nodding off at my desk, I decide to rearrange my personal effects. Having something to focus on is a great way to stave off sleep. Unlike the other employees here, I don't tend to keep too much at my workspace, yet it still manages to feel cluttered somehow. Next to my computer monitor are three little figurines that I collected from toy capsule machines. They're a set of anthropomorphic coffee cans that were released as a promotional campaign for my favorite coffee brand. See, she's got personality. Yeah, yeah, I, I... People really need to take some etiquette classes or learn to just not speak to each other as complete and utter assholes. Like, good lord, people. Each figure is about the size of my thumb. They're cute little things, and when you put the coin in, it would put, when you put a coin in the capsule machine, you never know which character you'll, you're going to get. So far, I've managed to collect Captain Cafe Ale, Lieutenant Long Black, and Madame Mochiato. If I remember correctly, there are two more I still need to get. <laughs> I've got a personality. For example, I love brand. But the capsule machines seem to be out of rotation now because they've been replaced with a different series of toys. If I ever want to collect the remaining figures, I'll probably need to buy them online. Oh well, I'm not super invested in having them and having to own all of them. I give each tiny figure a little bit of a dusting and set them back up next to my monitor so they're all standing up, straight and facing forward. Satisfied that they're tidy, I look at the small tray of drawers that sit to the, to the other side of my monitor. I mainly just store papers and office memos there. They're not really big enough to hold anything much larger than documents. I rummage through the drawers and discard a few old notices that aren't relevant anymore. When I'm done, I file away a couple of loose papers that have been fluttering around my desk for the last week. With that complete, I straighten up my keyboard so that it's parallel with my mouse pad. I give the keyboard a thorough dusting and then lean back in my chair and admire my work. Also, we have still not retrieved the death photo from Tomoe's desk, I do not believe. Yeah, I was about to say, I was about to bring that up. This feels like something she, I don't know if she's having second thoughts about it or thinking of pulling back, but it feels like with that last conversation, maybe she was sort of feeling like it and I think she may have forgotten, but she's not gonna be too worried that she forgot, I don't think. The desk looks much nicer now, a clean workspace, Invites a, clean, invites a clear state of mind, or so my co-workers would have, would have me believe. She's got two hours sleep brain right now, yep, yep. I 100% relate to that. Maybe I'll buy into that a little bit now that I can see the effects for myself. The corner of my eyes catch a glimpse of blonde hair as I turn to watch Tomoe enter the office. She nods at Shinya as she walks by his desk and continues nonchalantly toward her own workspace. Oh dear. Since her desk is in my line of sight, I have the perfect vantage point to watch her put her belongings down and take a seat. 
I feel a sudden stirring of excitement as she sits down. It's almost as if I'm anticipating something to happen. Was something supposed to happen with Tomoe today? Have I forgotten something important? Did, did a little, did a little thinky dink slip my mind, perhaps? Nah, it's probably nothing, right? It's probably fine. My tired mind can't possibly focus on these thoughts. I try to ignore the mild surge of adrenaline and start, it started pulsing through me when she took her seat. I distract myself by starting up my computer and looking over the list of today's tasks. It looks as though I need to correct a few entries I uploaded to the company's server yesterday. In my previously distracted state, it's possible I made a few typographical errors. That's fair enough. I'll get to work on correcting the data. I open up a few programs and listen to the whirring of my computer tower, nearly drowned out in the clamor of the office environment. The next sound I have, the next sound I hear eclipses the noise of the computer and the office and completely and absolutely. Okay, get ready for a scream. Somebody's about to have a freak out. A terrified shriek slices through the air like a knife, leaving a deathly ringing silence in its wake. I scramble to my feet purely out of instinct, scanning for the source of the scream. I don't have to look very far before my eyes fall upon a distressed Tomoe, kneeling on the floor and clutching her face. Oh boy. Oh boy. She's on the ground next to her desk, staring down, staring down unblinkingly, her fingers white from the stain of clawing at her own head. In the sudden chaos of people rushing to her side, I somehow managed to notice that one of her drawers on her desk is wide open. An open drawer. As, I tr as tired and exhausted as I am, the significance of the open drawer isn't lost on me. I immediately realized why my body subconsciously felt excited when Tomoe came into the office this morning. I left something in her desk drawer. Something I wanted her to find. Yesterday's obsession with discovering the identity of the one who requested my death caused me to forget my rebellious strike against Tomoe. I left something in her drawer yesterday, thinking she was the one who submitted my photo to the website. Then, she didn't come into work, and it completely slipped my mind. After she confessed to requesting Akane Tsurumaki's death, I erased my suspicion of her being the one who targeted me, but I didn't remove the item from her drawer. I'm in deep, deep shit now. Okay, I don't know. It sounds like she may kind of regret this a little bit. Before I can even lurch forward from behind my desk, Tomoe turns her head to face me. Her cold, grim eyes lock onto mine, refusing to let go. Hey, girl, how you doing? You okay over there? A trickle of cr a crimson blood seeps from her scalp where her fingernails pierced her skin during her panicked scream. Swallowing my nervousness, I break eye contact with her and stare down at the flat object that was once the focus of her outcry. It's a familiar photograph, a printed image on glossy paper, traditional, old school, and just as effective as I had hoped. Though I can't make out all the detail from this distance, the composition of the photo doesn't elude my memory. It depicts my very own corpse toppled backwards over a t what? Oh, okay. I was thinking she had shown her a picture of her own corpse. That's where I thought we were going. Okay. Okay. It depicts my very own corpse toppled backward over a tombstone. A bloody slash traces my neck, a laceration lines my stomach, and a knife protrudes from my chest. My black hair is, in ta is a tangled mess, the dark eyeliner smeared and smudged, the grimace on my face is an unmistakable mask of death. Noriko Kurosawa, stoic and unflinching in death. Noriko Kurosawa, dead atop a random tombstone in some nameless cemetery. Remember because of the VOD? See, like, that's the thing. It's like, I had, like, I hadn't really thought that she would go for herself. I don't know. I just kind of, like, I kind of, like, I felt that the, 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 the implication of that scene was that, it was that she was going to fuck with her by sending her a picture of herself. A bizarre, yet ultimately unremarkable way to die. It suits me perfectly. 
I'm proud of the work that went into this photo. The objective was to punish Tomoe for requesting my death, to create a work of art so horrific that she would beg for forgiveness when she found me still breathing. But the scene playing out, the, but the scene playing out before me is unlike anything I had imagined. Yeah, yeah, girl's in some shit now. Tomoe's face is scrunched up with hatred, the veins in her forehead threatening to burst and shower the office with, with, the sanguine, with the sanguine gore at any given second. Whether or not she thinks this is some sick prank is beyond my knowledge. All I can decipher from her expression is that she is likely to strangle me given the opportunity. But perhaps I'm jumping ahead of myself. Why do I automatically assume that she believes I'm guilty of putting the photo in her drawer? I mean, aren't I the victim in the image? Perhaps she actually... Who the fuck is responsible for this? Okay, it's not... Okay, we're not in deep shit. She's too dumb to think that it's us. She howls like a wounded animal, a battered and beaten pup backed into a corner. Clutching the photo, now torn from her bloodied fingernails, she stands and plants her feet firmly on the floor, steadfast, stern, resolute, a bulwark of, an immo of immovable fury. All eyes are upon her, the bleached blonde gal girl, with an antagonizing attitude is the center of attention in the this office. Photo is disgusting! Absolutely sick! Who made it? Who would do this to my best friend in the whole wide world, Noriko Kurosawa? From the confused and puzzled faces of the 20 or so employees huddled around, it's obvious that no one really knows what Tomoe is talking about. The photo is small, and with her clutching at it tightly and waving it around frantically, it's impossible for anyone to make out the detail. I'm bold enough to assume that no one else has managed to properly glimpse it yet. And maybe I can prevent our co-workers from getting a closer look if I act fast. I dart out from behind my desk and approach Tomoe. What's going on, best friend? Show me, bestie, what's going on? Tomoe aggressively thrusts the photo toward me. I take a cursory look at it and gasp loudly to add credibility to my acting. Let's go! No, she's, uh, listen, listen. I, like I said on Twitter, in this house, we love and cherish Noriko because Noriko has done nothing wrong. Adopting a fake countenance of shock, I grab Tomoe by the sh shoulder and pull her close to me. I bow my head against hers so we stand intimately in the middle of the crowd, forehead to forehead, our eyes fixated on one another. Oh, this girl's good. I hope my beating heart is loud enough for Tomoe to notice as we stand against each other. I whisper softly, my pulse quickening as I try to make my words sound urgent and confident rather than broken and anxious. Come with me. I need to talk to you. Tomoe tenses and stiffens, but she murmurs something that sounds like agreement. I pull away from her and grab her wrists and lead her out of the office. We exit, the throng we we exit from the throng and on of onlookers, scratching their heads and dart toward the elevator. Shinya says something as we pass him. He looks on with a pale face. The elevator ride down is silent and awkward, but eventually the doors open and reveal the ground floor lobby. We weave between the scattered couches and sculptures, making a frantic dash for the exit. We finally emerge outside into the brisk morning air. Trying hard to catch my breath, I notice Tomoe isn't nearly as exhausted as I am. I want to chalk it up. I want to chalk up my wheezing condition to a lack of sleep, but I know it's just an excuse for my poor physical fitness. Tomoe is still holding the photo in her hand. She looks at it once more in disgust, then faces me with one hand on her hip. You want to tell me what the fuck this is? Hey, I don't know. Why are you asking me? I don't know. I'm the one dead in the picture. Come on. Look, it's difficult to explain, but I'll try my best. What are you doing? Why aren't you acting like you're just as shocked? I want to find out who planted this in my drawer. And look at this. She thrusts the photo at me once again. She uses the point of her thumb to indicate the timestamp printed on the bottom of the it's image. Like yesterday's date on it. A photo of your dead body, as if you've already been killed. But here what? you stand. What are you doing, Noriko? Because I like, is it good? it's gonna be like twice I thought I could read this girl and what she was doing and maybe she's swerving me again. 
Sure enough, the photo bears yesterday's date. The time states 9.06 p.m. I marked it as such when I was under the belief that Tomoe would find it yesterday morning. I wanted her to anxiously wait out the day until my death accompanied the rising moon. Since that didn't go down the way I planned, the confusion on Tomoe's face is now uh, now is self-explanatory. That corpse girl wants you dead. Yeah, right. Corpse girl wants me dead. What a bitch, right? What did she say? Huh? This is just like what happened to Akane Surumaki when I requested her death. The police found a photo of her own dead body on her phone when they investigated how she died. What? Is this public knowledge? How did I not know this? And now you've got a similar photo. Does that mean Corpse Girl is trying to kill ya? <sighs> but it doesn't make sense. It's already past the time it says here. And why was the photo in my desk drawer? What do I gotta do with it? I'm still reeling from the information about Akane Tsurumaki. The police discovered the corpse photo on her phone. Of course they did. Of course they would investigate her death. It would... It was foolish of me to assume that photo wouldn't come to light. Tomoe grits her teeth and tenderly touches a finger to the bloody cut on her scalp. The place where her fingernails slashed in, slashed in anguish. She looks at her fingertip with revulsion in size. Look, maybe it's my fault that Akane Surumaki ended up down the well. Maybe it's not. The least I can do is make sure that the fucking corpse girl doesn't come to get you as well. Oh, look, we gotta protect her now. Isn't this just convenient? You ain't my friend or nothing, but nah, you ain't my friend. Stick it out together. Hell yeah, let's go. Slut sisterhood. Let's do it. All right. Are you are you down with the slut sisterhood, Cap? Are you down? Are you down? I feel like these are the most touching words Tomoe can string together. I'm somewhat flattered that she wants to protect me. Tomoe, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, I kind of do, you know? You comforted me a little when I came to you about the dead skank. Made me feel like I wasn't totally to blame, yeah? Oh, look at her. She's got a conscience. <laughs> you might not be as much of a psycho as I thought. Might be a heart beating behind that flat chest. Okay. Thanks. Unexpectedly, the brash and brazen girl beams at me brightly. I'm under 24 hour surveillance. Corpse girl's gonna have to crack my skull open before she goes sticking her fingers into yours. Damn. Damn. That is a great line. Look, this this entire game has been full of great lines so far. The writing is really fantastic. I'm loving it. It's Tomoe, really, that's not necessary. I can't figure out a way to convey that I'm not actually in any danger. Well, immediate danger at any rate. You shouldn't be wanting to try to prove that. At least not right now. Like you need to let her buy, like let her buy in on this. Let her buy in that you're afraid. Like this gives you a layer of cover at least. It's true that there's someone out there that wants me dead badly enough to have requested it through the website. But as far as the threat of Corpse Girl coming to me goes, I'm perfectly safe. I resign myself to simply stating, staring blankly at Tomoe, the girl I hold so much disdain for. I know I should choose my next words carefully. Tomoe is prone to violent outbursts, even in the best of times. Oh shit. Oh, what? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, this is, uh, there's one here. I'm going to put this one under the other choice. She can fuck off! Oh, Poncho Smith, how are you doing? How are you doing? I hope today is treating you well, because as other people in chat may or may not know, today is Poncho Smith's birthday, so I would like everyone in chat to please give a nice round of happy birthdays to my good pal, Poncho Smith, and uh, ahem, ahem, ahem. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Poncho Smith. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! There we go.
we go. All right. So now we got somebody that wants to take care of us. And I think this is a good thing. Like, okay, let's do we can say, uh, I don't need you to protect me. Fuck off. Thanks, but I'll be fine on my own. I'd feel better with you looking after me. This is coming to Switch. It's a couple of, it's going to be a couple more months because they're putting the finishing, they went ahead and like, uh, prioritized finishing the PC version uh, and getting the physical products out, but apparently it's go it's only going to be another month or two, maybe. Hope that, I hope the birthday has been good for you. Uh, all right. Where does chat feel like uh, in, with, with, uh, with Tomoe here because she is none the wiser that we're corpse girl. Uh, so we could just tell her to straight up fuck off. We could kind of go middle of the road with it or we could like, I kind of feel the extremes are the way to go. I, I feel this middle one may not be like, I kind of feel you got to go hard. Uh, you got to either tell her to fuck off or do we want to pull her in? What's chat's opinion? We need a new lover. <laughs> yeah, we need a new lover without Owie. Let's go with her. God, God, gal supremacy. Okay, that's a good. I like that. Look, opposites attract. It's not. It's not unthinkable to think that these two could get along. Um. Any other thoughts on the matter? Cause I'm kind of leaning to like I'd feel better with you looking after me as well. <laughs> yeah, we will so cock block Shinya. That'd be pretty funny. Cock block Shinya chip lock. <laughs> All right, no other opinions other than caps. So I think we're just gonna say like, I'd feel better with you looking after me. I'd feel better with you looking after me. You're damn right. Ain't no one gonna protect you as good as me. Tomboy reaches forward and ruffles my hair in a tomboyish manner. I grimace and bear it until she's satisfied and retracts her arm with a laugh. Now what are we gonna do? Now what are we gonna do? I don't totally believe this corpse girl person really exists, but still. Something or other killed Akane Tsurumaki. Pretty sure it wasn't suicide, what with the photo and all. Since you got one of them photos too, I reckon someone's out to get you. Yeah, who could it be? Yeah, about that. How about we hunkered down at my place after work? Gal's night in. Right? Oh damn, we're spending the night! Let's go! If someone tries to break down the door to get to you, I'll show him what's what. Look, I've beat the shit out of you before, so you know I can hold my own. She really is insistent. I almost can't believe this is the same girl that slapped the shit out of me last week. I feel like we could almost be friends at this rate, but what happens when she finds out I'm not actually in any danger? Oh god, yeah, like, what if this is bad end where she literally just calls us over to fucking Higarashi us? <laughs> uh, will she think I used her? Betrayed her? What if she finds out I'm Corpse Girl? That would probably be the trigger that provokes her into slashing my throat herself. Tired as I am and feeling weak as and feeling weak, weak of will, I simply nod. Sure. Let's go to your place after work. Yeah, that's what's up. That is what's up. We'll do a snack run, okay? Gotta have chocolate and cake on a night like this. Damn. All of a sudden, she freezes and stares intently into my eyes. <sighs> Shit. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Check out that cleavage. Look at her go. She knows what she's doing. She's aiming, like, she's trying to... I think we're being seduced right now with what she's doing on this this here a video game screen. Tell this floozy I already have cake. I don't know that that's an option. If that is an option when it pops up, we will absolutely tell the floozy that we have cake. She eats the cake because she has the cake. <laughs> it's fine. Snacks. Snacks sound good. Hey, don't feel pressured to eat, okay? I got a big appetite, so nothing will go to waste. Look at her soften up all of a sudden. She grins, looking proud of herself. My expression softens somewhat. Somehow, Tomoe is displaying the minimum amount of human decency, and yet, it's very touching. 
We've somehow broken down a wall between us and removed the animosity that has hung in the air since the day we met, and all it took was for me to send her a picture of my mangled corpse. There you go. The, the, the true way to finally bond with someone you're looking to get in touch with is, you know, just send them a, a photo of your mangled corpse and they'll feel the urge to protect you. That's how this goes. Suddenly, she reaches out her hand, the photograph held gently between her yeah. fingers. Better you have it than me. Looking down at the photo, it's pretty clear that it's me in the image. I suppose it would be the best for delete, to delete this evidence. I shred the photo carefully, making sure to completely destroy any of my defining features in the image. With the photo completely ripped beyond recognition, I toss it in a nearby bin. Tomoe smiles at me and we enter the office building side by side, like best friends should! This, this is the girl power route. Tomoe's apartment is not at all like I expected it would be. For starters, it's not an absolute trash heap like it always was in my mind's eye. This place is nice, fairly modern, and probably not that cheap. She lives on the outskirts of Shinjuku, so she's a lot closer to the office than I am. That probably explains why she's usually so punctual despite her terrible work ethic. From what I gather from the first impressions, she lives alone. A few photo frames near the entrance feature some family members, including a younger brother and sister. It's funny because she doesn't seem like the older sister type to me. The personal effects decorating the apartment aren't cheap and tacky, much to my surprise. I immediately get the feeling that she earns more money than I do, even though we have the same job. Though, how could that be? We're both simple data entry temps. We'd, sure, we'd surely be on the same contract and the same salary. I suppose she's a little bit older than me. Maybe she had a well-paying job before starting out at Temujin. Or maybe she has a side job. Either way, there's no way she could afford to live here on the same salary so, as me. Would you like a cup of tea? I've got oolong, green, barley, hojicha. So many to choose from. I didn't take you as much of a tea drinker. Well, of course I am. It's tradition, you know. Tradition's real important. Never figured you for the traditional type. Huh. Yeah, I guess so. Um, hojicha for me, please. Sure. Coming right up. She's even gonna make it for us. What a girl. As Tomoe busies herself in the kitchen nook, I continue scanning the apartment. The fairly large TV sets atop of the sleek cabinet against one wall of the living area. A comfortable looking sofa fills most of the room, but it gives way to a small katatsu in the corner. During winter, a katatsu is a very valuable piece of furniture. It's a small, low table with a blanket to cover your legs. Underneath is a tiny space heater designed to warm the enclosed area. I like your kotatsu. I can't even fit one in my apartment. Oh yeah, they're great, right? Dad actually made that one for me. Your dad made it? I look closely at it. I don't know much about woodwork, but the whole thing looks very solid and well made. Even the blanket spread underneath the table's surface is pleasing to look Probably at. It's not cold enough to flick the heater on, but feel free to sit down there if you like. Uh, no, that's okay. I'm warm enough. A memory of my childhood flickers at the edges of my mind like a moth dancing around a flame. Sitting out at the kotatsu as a child with a warm cup of cocoa and my big sister reading a book to, well, aloud to me. I shake my head. That was too long ago to even attempt to remember clearly, and the past never really mattered much to me anyway. Tomoe has finished pouring tea. She sits two ceramic mugs atop the coffee table and calls out Tease to up. me. Uh, thank you. Oh, look at this! So, we gotta protect you from Corpse Girl, right? Look at us, we're broing out! Check it out, this is nice. Look at, Noriko got a friend. She's hanging out with somebody, just doing the do like you normally do. I simply hey, nod. If you got one of them photos, that means someone requested your death, right? This whole time, I've been thinking it's Corpse Girl that wants you dead. That ain't right. It means that someone else just asked Corpse Girl to put you in the ground. Yeah, that's what I figure. She's not wrong. While Corpse Girl isn't, isn't actually after me, it's true that there is somebody who requested my death. So who do you think it is? Who wants you dead? Well, honestly, at first I thought it was you. <laughs> yeah, I mean... 
Last week, I might have been tempted to chuck your photo on the website, but nah. I'm amazed she didn't use us as the fodder, right? Like, I'm amazed that we were not the first to come to mind. You work right near me in the office. If you ended up dead, someone would trace it back to me, you know? I dobbed in Akane Tsurumaki because she worked way upstairs. And we never talked, save one time when I found out she's a total skank. Oh? So you did speak to her once? What was she like? Fucking slut, that one. We met in the lobby. I was on one of them couches doing my makeup because I was in early one morning. But like, you just said we're total sluts and sluts got to stick together. So why are you slutting out on another slut? This is so slutty. <laughs> yeah, right, big brain murder plays. What would your legal advice as a, as a law student be to Tomoe right now? <laughs> Mine would be, shut the fuck up. <laughs> she walks past me, gives me one of them looks all those snooty rich people give you. You know the type, like. I'm better than you, and I know it. Yeah, we're sluts. There are sluts and bitches in this game, Jetstorm. Lots of sluts and bitches. <laughs> Rival sororities. Some sluts are sisters. Some are skanks. Gotcha. Did you know what she said to me? What did she say? Oh, God. It's going to be real dumb, and this is going to be real bad. She says this. Honey, please wait for your clients outside the building. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Damn, you got you got dumpstered, Tomoe. I'm sorry. That girl dumpstered you hard. Oh shit. Huh? What did she mean? Ugh, don't you get it? She was implying that I'm a hooker or something. Just by looking at me, she decided I didn't belong in the office building. I don't know where she got that impression, like at all, my dear. Ugh, it really pissed me off. I'm sick of people judging me like that. Yeah, I look different from y'all, but so what? I got my own style, so just fuck off. Hey, Tomoe, can I, can I, can I bring something to your attention? Just a uh, little sidebar, please. Have you not been on our ass this entire game because we're kind of like gothy and flat chested? Hello, hello, Tomoe. The hypocrisy runs deep with you, woman. So you're not a hooker? <laughs> so you're not a hooker? Are you, are you sure about that? I mean... She's a dumb bitch, but she's our dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. You're lucky I'm in a good... Ah, so many bitches. We're back to bitches. We're back to bitches. All right. I can't help but laugh along with her. <laughs> Sorry, I was just kidding. Yeah, I know. You're not so bad, Nori. Thanks. You're not so bad yourself, Tomoe Watanabe. We share another laugh, and I feel my tense and guarded persona slowly slipping away. This girl, this person I detested just days ago, did I have her all wrong? We clashed countless times while working together, but now we're suddenly becoming closer. Why is that? It's almost as though some sort of mater maternal instinct kicked into gear inside Tomoe, and she feels the urge to keep me safe. Is this, is it guilt over Akane, Tom, over Akane Tsurumaki's death? Is it because she's happier overall now that she has a boyfriend? Does dating Shinya make her less pissed off at the world and less eager to lash out? I don't know what the, an I don't know the answers, but I'm glad we've been able to set aside our differences. Right. now we've got some tea. Why don't we watch some trashy TV? Hell yeah, bring on the trash TV. Not exactly my preferred way to spend an evening, but Tomoe has welcomed me into her home. We've all but buried the hatchet. Turns out if you get to know someone you see on a different side of them, whoa, fucking wowie zowie, right? It turns out that people may be a little more complex than initial impressions. Wow, wow. It's only fair that I extend a hand of friendship okay. as well. Trashy TV sounds great. Let's do it. Yeah. Tomoe cheers and picks up the television remote with a quick flick of her wrist. Yo, I got a, I got a, uh, I got an achievement. It said bleached soul, which is form a strong bond. Uh, form a strong bond with Tomoe. 
Okay, so we I, I think we made a right cho a decision or something? I don't know. That's weird. All right. Let us menu and save right here. Go Team Tomoy. Oh, you're, you're on Team Tomoy now. Another dull morning in the office. The chatter of people talking on the phone and the humming of the air conditioner and the tapping of fingers against keyboards. If I didn't have the music down, if I didn't have music to drown out the white noise, I'd probably go mad from being exposed to it every day. I don't know how everyone deals with it. Thanks to a good night's rest, I've been able to work diligently so far. I've completed a few tasks already, but there's still a lot more work to do. I wonder if we like would have made the right choice. Like it, like, like, I wonder if we wouldn't have pursued Aoi when we got the first choice. If we would have gotten like a little moment like that. Like a little bonding moment with her or some sort later, maybe. Cause I feel like we just kind of guessed right and got something there. Thanks to a good night's rest, I'm able to work diligently so far. I've completed a few tasks already, but there's still a lot more work to do. As I continue to pulverize my keyboard with my thin, brittle fingers, I, I look out over the office floor to see who is around. Shinya sits at his desk, his expression scrunched up in concentration, as he absent-mindedly scratches his face with the, with the blunt edge of a pen. Turning my gaze, I observe the back of Tomoe's head as she works attentively at her computer. She hasn't said anything to me since we arrived at the office this morning. Because I know now that she's not the one who requested my death, I feel more at ease around her. <clears throat> yeah, just trust your heart if your heart says you should be a gal girl and a golf girl. <laughs> Pairing and be super Japanese counterculture. I'm down for it. I'm here for it. Totally down for it. And like I said, when I play these games, I don't like go back and redo decisions until like the game specifically says, okay, like this is a route or this is an ending or something. And then I go back and, 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 and worry about choices. I don't worry about them. Like I just take it however I feel the first time and worry about things like that later. Because I know now that she's not the one who requested my death, I feel more at ease around her. And with the photo of my own corpse destroyed, I can put yesterday's unplanned events behind me. I need to be more careful in the future. Forgetting that I planted a photo like that in Tomoe's desk drawer was an oversight I can't afford to repeat. I need to be clever, calculated, cunning. Corpse Girl's ambitions require me to be at peak performance at all times. I can't go messing up like that again. I'm lucky that no one else was dragged into the whole mess. Imagine if I did something so stupid when trying to kill, uh, when trying to kill a real victim. I would have ruined the entire operation. Well, I mean, that's kind of how a lot of visual novels are set up. Even the visual no even the first visual novel that I helped write, um, you have to go through a lot of the ugly to get to the actual ending. Like, so there's a lot of bad decisions that have to be made because they're integral toward learning the way the world works and, and why people are the way they are. Um, so, yeah. Then the second one doesn't have any choices at all. It's 100% kinetic. Taking a deep breath, I clap my cheeks. I clap my cheeks. <laughs> I clap my cheeks. <laughs> Noriko, you cannot clap your cheeks on twitch.tv. <sighs> Taking a deep breath, I clap my cheeks. I can't even read it without laughing. Hold on. I need a moment. <laughs> I know what she's saying, but that is a phrase that has, uh, has different meaning. Uh, the night of many bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
The flickering notification on my laptop screen prompts a wicked grin to split my face in two. One new request! I don't waste any time before opening up the details of the request. My heart begins to pound and I feel the welcome rush of adrenaline flooding through my body. Request details. Today, 10.55 a.m. local time. Phone number. Downloading image. My eyes widened at the sight of the update of the uploaded photo. Two people. Two identical women. Twins? Identical twins? At that. The woman on the left is circled in red. She is obviously the requested victim, but without knowing them personally, it's impossible to distinguish between the two. They both have the same stunning features, lustrous hair and contagious smile and contagious smiles. This truly is an interesting request. I immediately jump to the conclusion that one twin wants the other dead. That's not the only possibility, but I'd like that I, but I'd like that I'd like to think that's the that's the pfft, brain stop. That's not the only possibility, but I'd like to think it's the case. Makes it exciting. This type of request only serves to reinforce my resolve. I can't wait to start gouging out the victim's eyes. She will leave behind a truly beautiful corpse. As I wait for my secret weapon, the as I wait for my secret weapon, the database of the deceased to load up, my phone tingles beside me on the couch. It's a noise message from none other than Kojiro. <clears throat> One farts in public, the other doesn't. Hey, you there? About last time. Hi! Hey, that guy, Eiichi Hanada. Gone today. Is that so? Where did he go? Cremated. Family didn't collect him. Limited space. You know how it is. I don't quite know why Kojiro decided to tell me this. I suppose he still thinks I requested Eiichi's death, so... I see. More names? What? Want me to look up more names? Corpse Girls victims? Sorry, I don't have any more names for you. Shame. Tell me if you request more deaths. Oh, and do you know her identity? Who, Corpse Girl? Yes. No, sorry, I don't know who she is. Okay. Is it you? Oh, jeez. You know it's serious when they start playing 46 and two by Tool. Jeez, are we back to this again? No, it's not me. I'm not as clever as all that. Okay. How does she kill? I'm not sure. Okay. What do you know? All I know is that the victim receives a photo of their own corpse before they die. Everyone knows that. My dog knows that. And I don't even have a dog. It's her calling card. You had a request fulfilled. Tell me more. I don't know what else to tell you. Lame. Okay. Yeah, like this is a very Tool song that's playing right now. Like it literally, like go listen to 46 and two by Tool. That's what this song feels inspired by. By the way, I saw the photo. What photo? Eiichi Hanada, photo on his phone, the calling card. Huh, how did Kojiro see it? Sure, he deals with dead bodies, but surely personal possessions are removed from the deceased before they enter the morgue? I need to play it cool here and not invite any more suspicion on myself. Are you talking about the photo that Corpse Girl supposedly sends her victims? Yes, funny thing was definitely the guy, but photo didn't match the cause of death. The photo didn't match the cause of death. I remember crafting Eiichi Hanada's photo, of course. It wasn't all that long ago. I used a base image of a corpse with uh, dismembered legs hanging over a power line. It was a memorable image, after all. It made, a f it made for a fearsome sight, but not something that could be easily replicated by suicide, or murder for that matter. So I never really expected Eiichi to end up looking like the photo. From what I read in the obituary, he died in a traffic accident. He must have been driving, or he was a pedestrian. Either way, it was likely a collision with a vehicle. For starters, cadavers still have both legs. No legs in the photo. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. I haven't seen the photo you're talking about. You haven't? Interesting. So Corpse Girl doesn't share with the requester. Hang on. Okay. 
So only the victim sees the photo. Here. Oh! Kojiro shares a photo in the chat. Sure enough, it's a snapshot of the corpse photo I produced for Aichi Hanada. He must have copied it from the victim's phone. Oh, you're pretty sure you got the Lateralis CD for a past birthday? I mean, Lateralis is pretty good. That's what, maybe, I don't know, 10,000 days is okay too. Uh, not a big fan of Fear Inoculum though. Oh, uh, that album was real boring. He must have copied it from the victim's phone. The photo from Corpse Girl, compared to this. Another photo is shared in the chat. This one I haven't seen before, but it's Eiichi Hanada's true corpse, sprawled forward in the driver's seat of a wrecked car. Seeing a genuine corpse photo doesn't come as much of a surprise to me. After all, I've spent countless hours trawling through the database of the deceased. I've seen more than my fair share of destroyed lives. There's not too much blood in the photo, it's kind of lame compared to the gorgeous rendition of his death that I lovingly created. It's still not entirely evident what led to Aichi's, uh, what led to Aichi's car, car collision. This very well could have been a genuine accident. For my own ego, I have to at least pretend Corpse Girl had a hand in it. Thoughts? The real death doesn't match Corpse Girl's photo at all. Why do you think that is? I feel pretty clever and manipulative by putting the question on Kojiro. I want to lessen the suspicion of my true involvement as much as possible. You're asking me? Well, some theories. Corpse Girl's photo is a scare tactic, nothing more. But don't know where photo comes from. She convinces the victim to kill himself. What the hell? How can his very first theory be right on the money? Just who is this guy? Is he stalking me or something? Does he actually know the truth? Second theory, Corpse Girl comes after the victims, but a genuine accident happened first. Eiichi Hanada died before she got him, died before she got to him. His second theory is off the mark, but I can see why he came to that conclusion. Regardless, this is a theory I want him to believe. I think the second theory is the most likely. Why would someone kill themselves from seeing a photo? Ooh, she playing smooth now. Doubting my own methods like this leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Not that simple. Photo is personal and timestamp, adds urgency, realism. Could be effective, especially in someone anxious or gullible. He's right, of course. Although causing death in this manner was never my intention when I first started Corpse Girl's website, it's a possibility that did occur to me when Rudy Hatano died. Wait a minute. How did you even get those two photos? LOL! Now she asks. Police on scene like to share. More morbid, the more morbid the better. Dead guy with corpse photo on his phone fits the bill. They sent me both photos. We played spot the difference. <laughs> Disgusting. I never knew the police could be so disrespectful to the dead. I don't know, I mean they're just as disrespectful to the living. Why wouldn't they be disrespectful to the dead? <clears throat> Well, I can't really talk, at the very least. I'm not in that line of work. Anyway, coffee? Huh? Get coffee with me. Yes or no? Unbelievable. This guy wants to meet up and grab coffee? He has, a converse has this conversation really given him the feeling that I'm interested in him? Does he think we've bonded over a discussion of dead bodies? I'm about to tell him no, but some part of me hesitates and halts my fingers. Kojiro has connections. The morgue. The police. It's not inconceivable that he might be a useful tool in the future. At this stage, I'm about 80% sure he doesn't know my true identity and might be safe to meet up with him. On the other hand, I get the impression that even if he knew who I really am, he'd only be impressed. Yeah, like you are super horny for dead bodies. Let's be real here. <laughs> it's a gamble. It could be beneficial or it could lead to me being caught out. I might even get arrested for my involvement in three deaths, though, is what I'm doing really illegal? Is it? As a law student, what's the legality looking like here, Black Cap? What are we looking at? What are we looking at from a law student's point of view? I think they got nothing.
Depends on jurisdiction. As with all law. <clears throat> okay, no, is what I'm doing really illegal? I'm not so sure, but I don't think a jury would take my side. That's why I have to err on the side of caution at all times. <laughs> Let me open the Japanese criminal code. Kojiro. Okay, let's meet. I type the words in it to send before, before, before I have any more second thoughts. It might be a fatal mistake, but I'm clever enough. I can wrap him around my finger and utilize his connections. Cool! Message you tomorrow. Bye! I love her utter confidence. I love it. Kojiro's status immediately changes to offline. I rest my phone on the couch and look back at the laptop screen in front of me. The smiling, beautiful faces of two identical women stare back at me. That's right, I was about to start working on this most interesting request. I still have plenty of time before I need to get to sleep. With this thought in mind, I set about my task in high spirits. It's Thursday! That's a really nice CG. Ever just want to drink some coffee and a really nice CG on the roof in the morning? Or on a balcony? There you go. The tiny balcony jutting out from the side of my apartment is nothing like it was advertised in a real estate listing. When I first saw the misleading photos, I thought it would be spacious and bright, an open-air hideaway that I could use to get some fresh air and improve my health. I wanted to set up a tiny garden and grow some plants, nothing that would require a lot of work, but something that could occupy my spare time. In reality, the balcony is a depressing amalgamation of steel and concrete that saps away any desire to stand upon it. It rests in the eternal shadow of the surrounding buildings and manages to catch the sun's rays for about four minutes every day. It's an understatement to say that I was disappointed when I ventured uh, out upon it for the first time. It's like an earthbound house with an ocean view. <laughs> I suppose it's something else. It's a good vantage point for looking out over the city, but that's the only positive thing I, could, I have to say about it. As I stand there with my back against the railing, calmly sipping lukewarm mug of green tea, I breathe a heavy sigh. I should be at the office. I should be tapping away at my keyboard, getting through the backlog of work that has accumulated this week. Instead, I'm here at home, tired and strained and wearing, th and wearing thin at the seams. I called in sick this morning. I don't know if my supervisor bought the lie, but he did tell me to stay home and feel better, so that's what I've been trying to do. It's my own fault I feel this way. It's my own fault that I stayed up to four, until 4 a.m. again. I know that a lack of sleep exacerbates my condition. I know that skipping meals and refusing to take medication makes me feel this way. I know that I do this to myself. I know, I know, I know, I know. But this is me. This is what I do to myself as I try to take on each day. This is the way I stretch myself thin for no reason other than because some days I don't want to be better. I just want to be. Oh, <clears throat> I want to stay up. I want to stay up late and work on Corpse Girl's requests. My body's need for sleep doesn't come before my ambitions. I want to eat only when necessarily, only when necessary, because when I'm slim, I look beautiful. I want to be beautiful, just like her. Just, just like her. I want to skip my medication because taking the same pills every day is a hassle and expensive, and I question whether I really need them anymore. If I'm going to stay at home like this, I don't need the medication. I even came out on the balcony, and this cat counts as being outside. You made it! How's it going, Elfino? Hope you're doing well. You were at the neighbors! You were at the neighbors. Well? Well, we, we, we had some thing. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. We've got a legal... Article 202A of the Japanese Penal Code, a person who induces or aids another person to commit suicide or kills another person at the other's request or with other's consent is punished by imprisonment or imprisonment without work for, le oh, for not less than six months, but not more than seven years. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. Like, she would absolutely be, uh, you could, you could prosecute her on this. Uh, but Alfino, we bonded. Uh, oh, shit. Wait, 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 go back. We missed a lot of text. Hold on. We missed a lot of text there. We gotta go back. We gotta kinda, hold on. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There's no skip button, is there? Is there? Hold on, okay, hold on. 
I goofed up and we missed some text, so we're skipping back real fast. That's on me. Okay. Anyway, we're having a moment here. Yeah, I'm just saying about green tea. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I just want to be. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So, we had a bond. We had a special bonding moment. We had a special bonding moment with Tomoe. Uh, we stayed at her house. Um, she got the picture that we sent her, which was of our own mangled and dead body. Okay, yeah, it would all revolve around the meaning of the word induces. Gotcha. So, yeah, we had a moment with Tomoe, and we're, like, apparently good friends now. We stayed at her place. We ate snacks. We watched TV. She's vowed to protect us from Corpse Girl because we, we had sent her a picture of our mangled corpse. So... We, we got that all to work out. Friends to the end. Yeah, yeah, the first hour was, uh, the first hour of the stream was very, very uh, lively. Anyway, I even went to that restaurant last week and read a book while eating dinner and no one even tried to cut, cut in front of me or, uh, uh, or abduct me. And no one tried to strangle themselves in front of me, uh, me and Yuriko. No one tried to strangle themselves in front of me and Yuriko, what? Can I really go out and do these normal things because of such tiny pills that a doctor said I need? Or can I do these things because I'm actually better now? Maybe I was never unwell in the first place. Not irrational, just cautious, careful, concerned. That's a common refrain. So the interesting thing is here, we're learning a lot about Noriko right now and that there's some shit going on here that we just did not know about. Girl got some problems. I realize that my mug is empty and when I bring it to my lips and taste nothing but the slightly waxy, unpleasant sensation of smudged lipstick. Well, I've been outside for long enough anyway. I'll go inside since it's getting late. Yeah, like the way that she keeps saying certain things like stoic and, and like that concern, you know, like the, the, the control stuff is just like, oh, this is like a mantra. This is something that's kind of like drilled in. There's a lot going on here. I'll go inside since it's getting late. Plus, I have the feeling that someone on the street below has been watching me and is waiting to climb up onto my balcony. I enter my apartment, set the mug aside, and retreat into my bedroom. My phone is where I left it, sitting face up, begging for my undivided attention. I snatch it up, unlocking the screen, greeted by the last web page I left open. It's my custom-made news alert for obituaries. From tomorrow morning, I'll be anxiously awaiting news of my latest victim's fate. I timestamp the photo of tomorrow's date, June 5th, 9.01 a.m. Hey, that's tomorrow! The unlucky twin has already received the photo. I sent it out earlier today. Yeah, we are still in the past. We have not, like, time-jumped forward, so... Whatever happened to Emmy at the start of this game may actually end up being very, very, very important. I'm starting to think now that like that wasn't just a prologue to show us how this game works. I'm starting to think now that we, since we've not like jumped up to that, that it's an important part of what's going on. And Emmy's story may actually be a lot more important than we realize. Maybe. That would be cool. After sending the photo, I always hide the burner phone out in the unused shed behind my apartment building. Getting the phone into the shed in the morning was rather difficult. I had to cover up my face and hands with some old clothes, and I waited until nobody was in sight before dashing as fast as I could. It took me a good ten minutes to collect myself inside the shed before I could rush back to my apartment and lock the door behind me. I don't think anyone tried to follow me. However, I know that I'm going to need to retrieve the phone again tomorrow and dispose of it. I'll check for a reply from the victim, of course. Not that they ever reply. Then I'll destroy the then I'll destroy the sim and discard the phone like I always do. She could have been a saber candidate. <laughs> it might be difficult to go out there uh, to the shed again. On top of that, I really should go to the office. Oh, and then there's one more thing I'm supposed to do tomorrow. Kojiro wants to meet for coffee. 
I'm so deluded to think that I can pull off all these escapades tomorrow in my current state. I resign myself to reaching for a bottle of medications on my dresser. Maybe another week of taking these pills won't be so bad. They tend to increase my appetite, which is really annoying. It's a constant struggle to try and ignore the hunger that tears at my stomach. And it doesn't help that they wreak havoc on my libido. I never know what to expect. Sometimes I can look at the photos of Owie on my phone and feel absolutely nothing. Other times I can simply be scrolling through noise while standing on the train and feel an overwhelming urge to explode. What's going on in this? It's where she hides the phones. Like, she keeps the phones around for 24 hours, and that's where she hides them to keep them, like, just to not be traced directly to her place. She hides them there, and then she retrieves them after 24 hours and breaks the SIM card and the phone and then uh, disposes of them. I do my best to dismiss my doubts and fears and swallow two of the tiny tablets. I follow up with a sip of water from the bottle kept next to my bed, and I fight the urge to retch. I'll take a shower to freshen up. After that, I should curl up in bed and read. I need to conserve my strength for tomorrow, so an early night is in order. Maybe tomorrow is the day I'll finally be better. Where the hell were you yesterday? Aw, oh, she's concerned. Did you miss me? Nah, just glad you haven't bit the dust yet. That's so sweet. Tomoe leans in close to me, almost uncomfortably so. Listen, have you had any trouble with Corpse Girl? Nope. I think I'm in the clear. Hmm. Well, I guess the time marked on the photo has long passed. Maybe you really are safe. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, though. Huh? Thanks for what? For thinking of me. Aww. Yeah, shut up. Aww, you like me. You like me! You did, you're not saying it with your mouth, but you're saying it with your eyes and boobs. You like me. Tomoe's face is glowing red with the Man, that always fucks me up. Every time I see them write red and green, it fucks with my brain. Tomoe's face is glowing red with embarrassment. Despite our differences and interactions regarding Corpse Girl have helped us bond a little. I'm not counting on Tomo. Uh, I'm not counting on Tomoe, and I am having a last. Uh, on, I, I'm, I'm not counting on Tomoe, and I having a lasting friendship. Even just quiet peace might be expecting too much. I think it's in Tomoe's nature to want to pick fights with people, regardless of whether she's close to them or not. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up quarreling again, no matter how much we learn to respect one another. If you need me, but don't bother me, you know. That's literally just. She's literally telling me to bother her. She waves and leaves a cryptic statement in the air behind her. I return, to my I return my attention to my computer and mark a few tasks on my list completed. The next person to waddle up to my desk and interfere with my work is Shinya. You weren't in yesterday? Nope. Are you well? Yep. Okay. Um, I've been meaning to speak to you about Sato. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Ollie? Yes, um. The thing is, I'm kind of in deep water because of her not showing up to work and then resigning immediately. Yeah, that's uh that's a bit of a problem that I don't know that I can fix. Uh, shit. I was supposed to talk to you about that actually. <laughs> yeah. Kind of I was kind of supposed to tell you that this company kind of hates you now and it's literally my fault. Oh. Right. I'm sorry, Shinya. It's my fault, really. I hassled you to get Ali a job. No, no. I didn't exercise due diligence. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think, like, it's because Noriko literally has a lot going on, and I think that that previous scene where we were taking pills and talking about our mental state definitely playing a large role in some of her uh, inability to interact with people right now. Yes, Shinya needs Kotomi Mommy. I really should have made her come in for an interview. Or I should have spoken to her myself to see if her heart was really in it. Hmm. When you put it that way. I'm not trying to be callous, but what he said makes Listen, sense. You couldn't have known it, but Ali struggles a bit day to day. 
I'll just say she has some anxiety issues and leave it at that. Nat's putting it mildly. Anxiety, huh? Don't tell anyone I said that. I was under the impression she's been doing a lot better, but maybe I was wrong. I guess we all have our hidden struggles, right? Right. If only he knew. Then again, maybe Shinya struggles too. Maybe dating Tomoe is his cry for help. Maybe he's gonna snap one day and come into the office with a knife. <clears throat> or maybe he'll discover Corpse Girl's website and request Kotomi eat his death in retaliation for, endure for ending his career. Who knows, I can't read this guy as well as I initially thought. For the longest time, I was under the impression that he had a crush on me. So what do I know? Anyway, I hope Sato feels better soon. Maybe she'll find a job that suits her one day. Maybe. Uh, say, seeing as we're friends now and all, would you mind if I ask you a, uh, personal question? That depends on what it is. It's related to, uh... Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, my boy! <laughs> All right, sit on down here. You pull that chair up. We are going to have ourselves a discussion, my friend. Let me tell you a thing or two about a thing or two. <laughs> my face scrunches up at the word. I don't like the direction this conversation is heading in. Shouldn't this be something you talk to your girlfriend about? <laughs> he showed up just in time! Uh, yes, uh, you're right. But I can't actually speak to her. Why can't you speak to your girlfriend about it? She seems like, I don't know, experienced maybe? I'm not trying to make judgments. I'm not trying to make judgments. I just get the impression, girl probably knows what she's doing. You're really the only other friend I have, so... Chinya's face takes on a dark expression that's far more depressing than what he just said. I feel bad for the guy. Um, well, what's the question? Oh, uh, if, hypothetically speaking, if someone pressures you into, uh, you know, sex? His face turns red. God damn it, it happened again. <laughs> yes, she, he should go to SoxMakePeopleSexy.net. There's lots of help there. Yes. If someone pressures you into it and you really don't want to do it, what should you do? Yeah, Tomoe, don't pressure the boy. He's not ready. Say no. Firmly and loudly. No one should make you do things you don't want to do. Uh, yes. Uh, of course. I feel that my answer didn't quite give Shinya the comfort he's obviously totally seeking. pressuring you into going all the way? No, uh, of course not. She would never. I... Uh... Never mind. It was foolish of me to bring up this topic. Wait, are you trying to pressure her? I'm really sorry, Noriko. Please, forgive my lack of professionalism. <sighs> Shinya, are you... You get a little too antsy for your pantsy, my friend. You making assumptions about Tomoe that like maybe she's a total slut and just like will pop them legs open like a <laughs> like a can of Pringles or something. Shinya bows to me deeply, his face parallel to the floor. He quickly turns and scuttles away before I get the chance to say anything else. What was that all about? Could Tomoe be pressuring him? I wouldn't put it past her, but something doesn't feel right. She seems really smitten with him. Would she really push him like this? Maybe it's guilt from not being able to, Maybe it's guilt from not being able to prevent his career going down the toilet, but I feel like I should try and do something to help him. I watch Shinya go to the elevator, and once the double door is closed, I get up from my desk and scoot over to Tomoe's hey, workstation. can I have a minute? Uh, this is weird. Normally I come to bother Yo. Yeah, sorry. Um... Have you and Shinya ever gone all the way? Huh? We've only been together for, what, a, a week? You think I'm some sort of slut? <sighs> hey, don't answer that! <laughs> no, don't answer that! Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Look, not that it's your business, but... No, we haven't. Shinya's sweet. He's old-fashioned, you know. He wants to really get to know me before we go down that road. And I'm happy to wait. The last few guys I dated only ever wanted one thing from me. And that gets old real fast, you know? Hmm. Okay. I believe you. 
Why are you asking me anyway? Did Shinya say something to you? No, I was curious, that's all. <laughs> you think we're real friendly now, don't ya? Well, I don't mind some girl talk. Come talk to me anytime. Aww. Thank you, I'll do that. Tomoe waggles her fingers and goodbye waves. I return to my desk, but I take Tomoe at her word, which I find myself doing increasingly often. She's not trying to get Shinya to do anything he's uncomfortable with, so that can only mean one thing. Someone else is pressuring Shinya. But the guy admitted to me only today that his only friends are Tomoe and myself, so what? who was he talking about when he brought up the subject? Wait, 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 wait! I know, I know what's going on! I know what's, oh my god, the, 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 his boss! That's why she's wanting to fuck him over! She can't fuck him, so she wants to fuck him over! Oh, yeah, well, there you go, me and Cap on the same level. Oh, shit, yeah, Katomi! Oh my god! Oh, shit! What goddamn the webs this game is weaving right now? I'm a little worried that I haven't received news alerts for an obituary today. My latest victim, the twin, the twin woman, and her photo timestamp are set to 9.01 a.m. this morning. If my method works, if my method works like it has the last few times, and she should be well and truly dead by now. She should have slit her own throat, or someone mysteriously should have come along and slit it for her. It's not like I've managed to identify how Corpse Girl's power works. I'm no closer to figuring out why her victims die. All I know is that they do die. And yet I can't find any matching obituaries for the day. I've tried searching manually too. I can't always rely on my automatic filters to get it right. I've scoured every source I can, f every source I can find and I've come up with nothing. It's possible that she hasn't killed herself yet. It's possible that she's planning to do it. Or maybe someone else is still plotting to kill kill her on Corpse Girl's behalf. It's also possible that this time my victim won't die. Depressingly, that puts me back at square one. My winning streak will will my winning streak will be over, and it really begins if and it really begins if the corpse. And it, it, <laughs> depressingly, this puts me at it square one. My winning streak will be over before it really begins if the corpse photo has no effect. I make a mental note to discard the burner phone when I get home. I somehow forgot to get rid of it on my way to work. You're getting sloppy. You're getting sloppy, Noriko. Being so absorbed in my strict morning routine. But it's not too late. Barely 24 hours have passed since I sent, sent out the photo. I'm not straying too far from my modus Yo, operandi. Yo, can. how's it going, Joker? Yeah. What's up? How's it going, friend? That familiar halting voice snaps me out of my thoughts. Kojiro stands before me, wearing slightly cleaner clothes than the last time we met. Very possible that he has interpreted this meetup as a date and decided to wear his absolute best outfit. I love how she kind of considers attention from anybody, being like, man, they want me. Little, little full of herself. The smell of the morgue is only faint upon him, thanks to the desperate cover-up scent of a strong cologne. Can I sit? Please. Kojiro pulls up a chair and sits across from me. He's relaxed and awkward all at once. His tall, lanky form doesn't really seem to fit in with the tiny, cozy cafe he selected for our meeting Waiting point. Long? No, not really. Great. Ordered yet? No. What do you recommend? House blend. Fantastic. They roast it here. Also, the chocolate gateau is amazing. I'll order two slices. Thank you, but I'm not hungry. Coffee is fine. Roger that. The waitress eventually comes around and Kojiro places our order in fluent French. I think the waitress is taken aback as she bows politely and humbly asks him to repeat himself in Japanese. Once our order is settled, Kojiro leans forward and looks into my eyes. Glasses? <clears throat> I subconsciously reach my hand to my face and check if I'm indeed wearing glasses. Of course I'm not! No? Why would you say that? Kojiro leans back casually and shrugs. Maybe you had them on last time. Last time? Is he referring to when we met at the library? I've never worn glasses. <clears throat> Sorry. 
<laughs> Gonna go look up a ghetto. Don't be sorry. Just make a conversation. That's like the that's some of the most fun of reading visual novels is like cultural things like that and culinary things that you gotta go look up because you just never heard of it before. Yeah, it's a cake. This place is great, right? It's true that the cafe possesses a quiet, comfortable atmosphere. The smell of freshly roasted coffee lingers in the air, and the display of various cakes at the front counter make, doesn't make me ill. I can't make out the faint. I can't make. I can make out the faint sound of acoustic music in the background with vocals, and I presume to be French. Mr. Charisma over here. All in all, it's a nice place. Kojimur, Kojiro chose oh, well. Uh, is this place expensive? I just don't have much money, that's all. Don't worry, it's on me. How's work? The bank, right? I cocked my head to the side. Did I ever tell him what I do for work? I don't recall saying anything on the subject. Um, I work at the head office for Temujin, not in an actual bank. Not so. Huh, read your profile wrong. I relaxed somewhat at his explanation. Of course he would have read my noise profile before meeting up with me. That's pretty normal. I don't, I don't, I don't keep much personal information on there, but it's true that my workplace is listed. Our conversation is put on hold as the waitress returns with two cups of coffee and a single slice of chocolate gâteau. The cake is delicate and moist, and my stomach growls in betrayal of my convictions. Kojiro thanks the waitress in French, and she once again bows in embarrassment and takes her leave. Bye. He scoops up a portion of the cake onto his fork and holds it out to me. I wave my hand politely and shake oh, wow. my head. <clears throat> he takes a bite and looks immediately satisfied with his choice Eat of dessert. If you wanted. Your skin and bones. Excuse me? Just saying, could stand to gain some weight. Merci beaucoup. The nerve of him. Who would say that to a young woman? I'll have you know that I eat perfectly well. Think- Whoa. Sorry. Wasn't trying to be mean. You're gorgeous. Just saying, some cake wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I'm gorgeous? I feel a little flushed and I look down at my phone to avoid Kojiro's warm coffee, gaze. Please? I reach out for the cup in front of me, more due to the pleasant aroma than Kojiro's suggestion. I take a sip. It's been served at the perfect drinking temperature, and it's absolutely delightful, rich, delicate. I could drink this all day. I've probably been wasting my time drinking canned coffee, but this is the real Thanks. deal. For the first time since Kojiro arrived, I smile. It's wonderful. Right? I like your smile. This guy is really laying it on thick. I didn't come here to be swooned, still. The praise is kind of nice, even if he's just trying to play me with the oldest lines in the book. I figure I should switch the subject to encourage him to stop flirting. So, how long have you worked in the morgue? Hmm, wow, good question. Okay, let's see. 34 now. Started there at 22. Damn, 12 years. Ah, oh, never thought about it. Shit, I'm old. <laughs> no, not at all. You're older than I expected, but really, it's no big deal. How old are you? Can I ask that? I don't mind. I'm 20. Phew. Okay. Right. Is that an issue? No, of course not. You're mature for your age. Or I'm out of touch. You're out of touch. I can't help but wow. giggle. Okay. <clears throat> He laughs it off, but I wonder if he did. But I wonder if I did hit did a nerve. Ah, uh, no, no, no! I'm, I'm slamming this car in reverse. My heart belongs to Tomoe Watanabe right now. But if Aoi were to say yes, then Tomoe moves back down to number two. <clears throat> and there it is, straight to the point. How do I answer a question like Good that? Question. I've got no issue with age, but I don't really know if you're my type. And if I can be honest, there is someone I have feelings for already. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. And so, unrequited love, huh? Well, you didn't have to go and say it. Something like that. Hmm. Rob's can't compete with that. Well, that's okay. 
You're stunning. Out of my league. Throw to be friends of nothing else. Friends sounds nice. Mad. He raises his coffee cup to a toast and takes a sip. Maybe, maybe I had him wrong. He might be a bit more mature than I gave him credit for. If he can take a rejection without pressing the point, that speaks a lot about his character. So, corpse girl. Hmm? Interesting, right? What is she doing? Lumps! How's it going? How's it going, friend? You doing all right? Everybody, be, be a good friend. And go follow my pal Lumps. Hope you're doing well uh, before you head out for a couple of weeks. Packing for the two weeks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna miss those comfy lump streams. But yeah, we're just doing some more chilling with some Corpse Factory. This story's taken some dips and dives and turns and it's, it's, it's proven to be pretty good. <laughs> you are procrastinating, good. I'm on team procrastination, I'm all I am here for all that procrastination. Don't you worry, friend. The photos, the killings, all without knowing the Vic's name. <laughs> yeah. Wonder what her death count is. Three, four if I'm lucky. I try not to say this out loud. Eiji Hanada. <clears throat> Car crash. Was it planned? Gonna climb a silly little radio tower? What is the definition of cr procrastination? Cut the brake line, drugged. Hmm. I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's where you were going with that. I have no idea, sorry. Uh, but you requested his death. Uh, yes. I did lead him to believe that. I'll have to continue to go along and with for it. for no personal reason? That's right. Brutal, don't request my death, okay? <laughs> we'll see. Oh, oh. <laughs> His face lights up almost as if he's impressed with the ambiguous answer. Excited, Maybe even. You should try the site. Request a death. Know anyone who deserves it? Sorry, not off the top of my head. Hmm. Neither. Maybe you should request me. I'm dying to know how it goes down. You know, maybe you shouldn't mess with this stuff. What if you really ended up dead? Please murder me. <laughs> I can protect myself. I mainly want a corpse photo. How does she do it? Oh, by the way, you read that book I gave you? You mean Strange Flower? Bingo. I'm halfway through it. Wow, fair effort. It's long. Thoughts? Hmm, it's interesting. I won't lie. Now, Bell Sinclair is a sicko, right? Right. He's not all there. Halfway through, huh? Has he dined with the dead? Yeah. Who was it? Mm, his school teacher, I think. He dug up her body two days after she died and then dressed her in his mother's Sunday best. <laughs> yeah. Took the corpse out for Italian? <laughs> I can imagine the waiter's reaction. Ah, uh, classic. Ah, oh, just that's a, such a classic. Classic Nobel Sinclair. <laughs> Gosh, what a guy. Kojiro seems to really enjoy reminiscing about the book. The story is definitely interesting, but the way he's laughing at it makes, it makes me a little worried. Then again, the guy works in a morgue, so maybe the whole scenario is just comical to him. That's it there. <laughs> the weekend with Bernard. <laughs> It takes me a second to realize what he's pointing at. Sure enough, the book in question is sticking out in the top of my bag. I want to show you a funny passage. I nod and reach for the book. I pull the massive tome from my handbag with a fair amount of effort. The book comes free and it snags the bag zipper and causes some, uh, causes some contents to fly out. A few personal belongings fall to the floor with a clatter. I notice my lipstick, lip gloss, notepad, Pen hit with cafe, uh, and pen hit with the cafe's tiled floor. Kojiro comes around to my side of the table and helps me pick up my thing. Is she about to just fuck? Did she just fuck up? Is she just about to fuck up? Did she drop something incriminating? Do you think? He pauses when his hands grapple with another book that has fallen underneath strange oh, flowers. Oh, uh, I don't know what, why I would have that. Eh? 
What's this? I quickly reach for the book and try to snatch it from his grasp. It's nothing. Kojiro is quick, and he instinctively avoids my desperate grab. He holds the book aloft and continues reading the cover. English? A comprehensive history Oh, of dear! Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Said the ICQ. He returns to his seat and flips through the pages as I finish packing my belongings away. I bow my head silently, waiting for his no, judgment. You can read this? No, I can't! I just like the pictures. I just like the- I, re I look at them for the pictures. Oh, this is tough. My English isn't good. Thought it was French at first. Oh, these images. Kojiro suddenly snaps the book closed and looks at me. I figured it out. Oh, dear. I brace myself for his inevitable accusation. Corpse girl fakes the photos. Yeah, corpse girl fakes the photos. Whoever corpse girl is. Photos aren't from the future. No, they're not. Like that was ever possible. Photo is fake. Timestamp is fake. He's correct. But will he go back to assuming that I'm corpse hey, girl? Why do you have this book? I just, you know, like, you know, I like books, you know. Um. Are you editing photos? No. I mean, I don't even know what editing photos me. is. Is that That's something you eat? Like, I don't know. Hmm. This book is old. Doubt the techniques are useful anymore. Still, it's interesting. My theory, thoughts. About Corpse Girl faking the photos? Bingo. Bingo. I don't know. Sure, it's possible, but. Can anyone fake a photo so realistically? Realistically? Do you know her photos are realistic? Thinking quickly, I snap back with an answer. You sent me that copy of Eiji Hanada's corpse photo. The one Corpse Girl apparently produced. True. It was good, right? Pretty convincing. Very convincing. Is photo manipulation that good? I suppose if someone skilled enough was doing it. If it's not photo manipulation, then one more theory. What is it? Maybe the subject in the photo is a corpse. I'm confused. Of course it's a corpse. What's your point? Sorry, uh, hear me out. It's a photo of a real corpse. Just not the victim's corpse. Corpse girl acquires a real corpse, dresses it up. Just like in Strange Flower. She makes it look like the Vic. It's convincing because it's real. No photo manipulation. She's really good at that. She is really good at like when she gets the opportunity to puff herself up, she really just dives right in. Huh, I see. Immediately, my mind starts to kick into high gear. Kojiro has unknowingly presented me with an unprecedented idea. What if Corpse Girl does get real corpses? What if she dresses them up, wounds them, makes them look like a carbon copy of the victim? Then she holds a photography session to capture the magic. The realism will be amazing. It will be way more convincing than manipulating a photo, even though I've become pretty good at that. It will be the next step up in realism. It's sure it's sure to convince victims to kill themselves. If Corpse Girl's victims can be relied upon to kill themselves, then I don't have to continually question the cause of death. I wouldn't need to worry about whether some mysterious third party is wandering around slaying people on Corpse Girl's behalf. All of the deaths would be caused by suicide. It would be predictable. Conquering victims would simply be a matter of forging a convincing enough corpse replica. But the legwork involved in acquiring corpses would be... That's it! The answer is sitting right in front of me, with a smudge of chocolate cake on his chin and an empty coffee cup resting in his hand. Say, hypothetically, would it be easy for Corpse Girl to even have access to dead bodies? Legal ramifications aside, could she possibly have a source of cadavers to desecrate at will? Mm. Yeah, it's not impossible. Take someone like me. I have the morgue. I'm there alone, mostly. 
Someone like Corpse Girl makes me an offer? I'd give away spare corpses, no problem. Of course, I could get busted. It's not about losing my job. I'm not going to prison. The price would have to be right. But that's just me. Employees in other morgues, well, can't speak for them. Interesting. So you would willingly work with Corpse Girl if the price was right? Yeah, I think, like, I, I think this guy knows. Like, he is, there is no way he doesn't know. Yeah, I've said it before. Big fan. I support her work. It's fascinating. If she really is using cadavers to make photos, then, well, I'm offended she didn't come to me for help. <laughs> this is amazing. I never imagined this meeting could be so lucrative. If I want to get my hands on all the corpses I'll ever need, I can just ask him here and now. I find myself breathing heavily and I notice that my cheeks are warm and my head feels slightly airy. It all comes down to whether or not I want to step I want to step up my game. The way things are, well, the twin woman, my latest victim, doesn't seem to have given up the ghost. Maybe I'm being impatient. Or maybe my work just isn't as convincing and powerful as I want it to be. Then there, then there are the cases of the previous victims. Akane Sudamaki killed herself. There's no doubt about it. But Aichi Hanada? It's highly possible his car wreck truly was accidental. I may not have had a hand in that after all. But Rudy Hatano was my first ever request, or my first ever conquest. The cause of her death still eludes me. There's no way, there is no way she could have killed herself in the position in the position her body was discovered in. She's the whole reason that I started suspecting someone else's involvement in the first place, after all. So there is one definitive suicide, one potential murder, and one death that was an accident, a traffic collision, and happened to coincide with the date I wanted the victim to die. Statistically, there's no way to know how Corpse Girl's power actually works. It's almost like deaths are just caused at random. And then you pile on the countless failures I've encountered over the past year. My success ratio isn't very impressive. If I can truly compel victims to simply kill themselves, then it would take the guesswork out of the whole thing, that's for sure. With Kojiro's help, I could acquire cadavers and make them look like my victims. The work would be completely different to photo manipulation. There will be gore involved, no doubt about it, and it'll take a steady hand, some makeup artistry, and access to clothing props. Then there's lighting then, then there's lighting to consider and backdrops. It's one thing to take an image from a database of the deceased and have a corpse splattered on the pavement ready to go. It's an entirely different thing to drag a body out of a morgue and plant it in a position and take photos of it. There will be a lot to consider here. It's not a decision I can make lightly. And on top of that, I don't know that I have the courage right now to ask Kojiro straight up for his help. But if I do go for it, I'm absolutely positive it will land a massive amount of credibility to Corpse Girl's mission. The extraordinary realism will pave the road ahead of me with Yo, blood. Finish your coffee? Oh. I quickly take a sip and drain the that cup. Was delicious. Thank you for treating me. Very welcome. Shall we head off? Yes, let's. Any plans for the night? Yes, sorry I can't hang out longer. No problem. I had fun. Kojiro stands up and conjures his wallet. He leaves a few bills on the table, then steps toward me. I stand up too, playing, playing my best hand. I quickly lean forward and plant a soft kiss on his cheek. God damn! She's just keeping him snared. Keep him snared. The maneuver is surprisingly difficult thanks to his height, and I don't think I can pull it off as gracefully as I had planned. Thank you for the date. Will I see you again? I give him my best alluring look as I bat my eyelid gently. Y yeah, of course. He slowly rubs his cheek with his tender fingers, amazed that I just kissed him. Bye now. I spin and make a beeline for the exit. Damn, girl! Stepping up game because she gotta keep him on the hook. You gotta admit, that's a smart play. That is a really smart play. 
I hope my trembling legs don't betray me as I step out onto the pavement outside. It's not in my nature to try and seduce somebody for my benefit, so much that my attempt at it has left me feeling rather queasy. <laughs> Kissing out a morgue worker. What could go wrong? I don't know how I pulled it off, but now that I've left the cafe, I can't look back to see what effect I had on Kojiro, if any. I cross the road and a shiver runs down my spine. I hope I'm prepared for what I'm getting myself into. All right, I'm going to be right back. And I think we're gonna maybe do one more day, see how people are feeling, and then, and then we might call it. But I will be right back. Need to get more stream juice. Yeah, we've been here. We've been here. We know this place. Got me thinking that we may see some people. Maybe new people, new old people. But I'm gonna go get some stream juice, stretch out for a couple minutes. And we'll come back and like I said, we'll, we'll maybe do like another day or so and see how we're feeling. Uh, and all right, catch you in a few. you stopped by to say hello thank you for stopping by always a pleasure to see you out there hanging going to bed soon hey big relate 
Big relate. I don't know that I'll be long. Uh, I don't know that I'll be long out of bed once I uh, finish up stream tonight. Feeling kind of tired myself, but you know, you know how it be. You know how it be. All right. Let's see what the day's got in store for us. We're going to the mall, everybody. We know some friends that work at the mall. Maybe, maybe we're gonna get a little more information on some people who have already appeared in the story. Let's go. The weekend is here, and despite my desire to stay inside my apartment, the doors locked and windows closed, I find myself at the mall shopping for a new phone charger. Bitches at work in the mall, right? My current charger gave up on me at midnight, and now my phone is running dangerously low on life power. I tried plugging into a different outlet, so I tried plugging into my laptop, but nothing I did gave, me, gave the device even the slightest amount of charge. I thought for sure that I needed a spare that I had a spare charger laying around, but I turned my apartment inside out trying to find it. I couldn't even find the right type in my drawer uh, of burner phones. So either the charger has died, which is the best case scenario, or my phone has become faulty. I hope the latter is not the case because I really can't afford to purchase a new one. Getting it repaired is out of the question. I refuse to hand it over to somebody for a day or two and go without it. So I'm hedging my bets on the issue of being with the charger. If I can buy a new one, all my problems should be solved. This is what I tell myself as I scurry through the crowded mall, dodging left and right to avoid careless people trying to bump into me. Life power was not the phrase, I, it, was, it was a bit of a weird phrase to use there, yeah. I know there's an electronic store around here somewhere. Even a discount store will probably have a budget charger that will still fill, that would still charge my device. I just want to find what I'm looking for and get out of this place. As I blindly navigate the area, I think back to last night when I first noticed my phone was no longer charging. I'd been browsing through the obituary news feed, searching desperately for any sign the latest victim's demise. No clues came up. There were countless new obituaries, of course. It's a big country and people die every day, but very few match the description of my victim. <laughs> bump system. Yep, yeah, the game's got bump combat. The obituaries that did match had photos included, but none of them looked remotely like the twin woman. It was a dead end after dead end. I might just have to accept the fact that the latest request will go unfulfilled, but accepting it made me, made me angry. Very, very angry. I find myself stomping through the mall more often than simply walking. A few people know, a few people glance at me, but I don't pay heed. I wanted that woman to die. I wanted her twin sister to rejoice or despair at the face of, of the face that befell her own flesh and blood. I wanted her to feel the fear of seeing her own corpse in a photo. I wanted her to feel the cold and clammy hands of death tugging at her skirt, whispering to her, inviter, inviter, inviting her to spiral down and down and down and down. To spiral down and just die. To give up to die. To spiral down to die. To spiral out of control. I wanted her to die. I wanted her to die. I wanted her to die. Spiral down, down, down. It, it, it literally is turning into a tool song. Why didn't you die? Why didn't you die? Are you going to have a moment in the middle of the mall? My head is foggy, my senses blurred, my face hot, my hands cold. I repeat the mantra through my gritted teeth. Why didn't you die? Why didn't you die? Why didn't you die? Yeah, if you want a downward, downward spiral, there's a very good Nine Inch Nails album by that same name. I fall to my knees and scream at the top of my lungs. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is not... <gasps> This is not a good look, Noriko. This is not what you want to be doing right now. Very, very cool CG though. Very cool. We like it. Girl's got great hair, if you didn't already know. Yeah, that's, this is what you scream at a shopping mall. This is fine. This is normal. Why didn't you fucking die? Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Damn, she's having a full meltdown. Can we get a security guard down here, yeah. please? Yeah. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Die! 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 Is she going to kill somebody? Mom, I'm scared. <laughs> I'll kill her. I'll find her. I'll find her. I'll find her. 
I taste blood in my mouth. My tongue is numb. My teeth chatter. I'll find that twin bitch. I'll find that twin bitch. I'll find that twin bitch. I'll kill her myself. I'll kill her myself. I'll kill her myself. I'll kill her. I'll kill her. All right. That's enough. A strong hand pulls at my shoulder and my face hits the ground hard. My arms are restrained behind my back and all I can see in my blurry vision is a checkered tiled floor in the You're mall. You're coming with me. My limp form is tugged backwards and my head lulls to the side. I shut my eyes and let the blackness envelop me. <laughs> yeah, it's a Konami shooter, twin bitch. A stinging cold pack bites against my cheek and rudely awakens me from my stupor. I don't know where I am. I don't remember why I'm here, but the sudden chill spreading across my face is nice, almost soothing. I realize that somebody, a tall man, is holding an ice pack to my cheek and he motions for me to take a hold of myself. I reach with a sluggish hand to grab the ice pack and continue to press it against my skin. Paul Blart, got it. Paul Blart's on the case. The man walks around a chair and seated in and stands behind a simple wooden desk to face imagine me. imagine my surprise when I recognized you. Uh-oh. You recognize me? Huh? Opening my mouth in an attempt to talk causes a dull ache in my I jaw. apologize for treating you so roughly. The only reason I haven't called for the police is because I want to give you the opportunity to calm down and explain yourself. Probably knows my sister. This guy, I know him, but from where? Oh, of course. It took me some time because I'm not used to seeing the security uniform. Oh, this is Kenji Ogawa. Right, 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 right. Right, right, right. I started, I noticed it right at the end of that last line because I heard a little bit of that English accent pop up again. Oh boy, oh boy. This is the dude from the same apartment complex that we're in. He's got the cute daughter. This is the father of sweet little Momo. Mr. Ogawa. Ah, so you aren't completely out of it. No, I aren't completely out of it yet, no. Where am I? This is the mall security office. You caused quite a scene, Nariko. A scene? Hmm, you don't remember. Well, give it some time. I'm sure it'll come back to you. I try to think hard about the circumstances that led me here. I remember something about visiting the mall to buy a phone charger, but I don't think I ever found the store I was looking for. Some kind of anger or fear or something. Some familiar primal emotion got the better Listen, of me. Mariko, I've always thought you were a sweet girl. And Momo looks up to you, you know. Please, tell me that you're just not feeling well. Please tell me the things you were screaming aren't true. Oh, uh, well, you know. Uh, the things I was screaming. An image of a smiling woman flashes in my mind. A twin woman with beautiful features and lovely hair. The victim. The one who didn't die. That's right. I remember now. I lost my cool because I was so overwhelmed with frustration that she didn't die. I must have broken down and unleashed my anger here. Right in the mall. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. This is all because I went outside. I went somewhere I don't normally go. I'm usually fine with going to the office. It's familiar. The convenience store is fine too. In fact, my whole meticulously planned morning routine rarely bothers me. But the shopping mall, what was I thinking? I haven't been keeping up with my medication. Even, even if I was on top of it, going somewhere out of my comfort zone is always a risk. I need to start regulating my intake. Taking a pill or two every other day or when I feel like it is, isn't going to help me. Skipping days at a time and just popping a few in my mouth when I need to leave the house isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. I need to follow the guidelines. I need to keep a strict schedule of when I take what. Damn it, Noriko. I'm supposed to be calm at all times. Stoic, unflinching Noriko. What the fuck am I doing? Noriko, you still look a bit flustered. Do you want to lie down for a bit before talking to me? No. Okay. Well, do you want to explain what happened? Well, you see, there's this bitch that I'm trying to kill, and I don't know if she died or not, and I'm kind of freaking out about it. No. Huh. I never took you for a troublemaker. Please, Nariko. I'm begging you. Don't make me call the police. 
You were screaming about killing somebody. You were manic. You can't just act like that in public. You scared a hundred people just trying to make their way through the mall. You scared me. A knock at the door causes Kenji to flinch. Hola. May I enter? Oh, oh boy. Yes. Please come in, Mr. Fujikawa. The metal door separating the security room from the real world opens with a screech. A broad, intimidating man enters a small room and displaces all the air inside. I feel like I'm going to suffocate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's calm now. Indeed. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Because Shinya's last name is Fujikawa, is it not? And this is his dad. This is Mr. Detective. A man who seems to be some sort of detective looks me up and down with a sour yes. expression. Your name? Uh. I don't answer I it. I see. Sir, if I may, this is Nariko Don't Kurosawa. narc me is out, dick! Is that so? An acquaintance? Well, that speaks volumes about your personal life, Ogawa. Sir. Leave us be. I wish to talk to her. Oh, boy. Yes, Mr. Fujikawa. Kenji bows, his grim smile cracking under fear as he exits the room. The detective, or whatever he is, towers over me. He pulls out a badge from inside of his jacket and flashes it at me. Are we going to get in a car with good air conditioning? I got a feeling we're gonna. there's going to be air conditioning, right? My name is Fujikawa. I'm a detective, an investigator for the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. You must understand that we take death threats very seriously in the police force. Huh? Excuse me, but Kenji said he didn't call the police. Kenji? Ah, Ogawa. Well, never mind what he said. I was here already in regards to another case. I happened to witness your little outburst. Ogawa was kind enough to allow me a moment to interview you personally. How great of him. Loving him for that right now, not gonna lie. Right. So, what do you want to talk about? Listen, if I were in your shoes, I'd drop the sardonic act. I have reasonable grounds to arrest you here and now. His voice drips with pure venom. This guy isn't joking around. I squirm a little in my seat and remove the cold ice pack from my now, face. Miss Kurosawa, would you please explain to me who you are threatening to kill? A wave of dread washes over me as the reality of my current situation starts to sink in. If I don't fly straight and narrow here, I might be in for a world of trouble. I apologize for my actions. I wasn't feeling like myself earlier. I regrettably skipped my medication recently. <laughs> the medication excuse. I mean, it's not an excuse. I literally do take medication. I'll play along. Were you hallucinating then? No, sir. Not exactly. I need to come up with something and quickly, or I'm not getting out of here anytime See, soon. I recently had an altercation with a coworker about a guy we both like. The detective rolls his eyes at me. I guess I was a little upset about our fight, and really, we're actually quite good friends, so I think a combination of that and missing my medication caused me to get a little too upset and say some things I don't really mean. Is it an Eastern European accent? I think the guy that voices uh, the elder Fujikawa is, I they I, I don't want to take a guess at his ethnicity and be wrong and then feel like an asshole about it. I, 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 I know that I see him on Twitter and I've retweeted him a few times, though. I know who the guy is. I just don't want to... I don't... I'm not 100% sure on it. Mm-hmm. And how do I know you're not dangerous? Are you carrying any weapons, Miss Kurosawa? Weapons? No, of course not. I see. Well... You're going to have to permit me to search your belongings. You understand that I can't allow you to leave until I have established that you're not a threat, right? The detective lurches forward and roughly grabs my handbag. Hey! Uh-oh. 
He tears it open and rummages around inside. I'm somewhat relieved that I'm traveling lightly today. I even left I even left the two books I'm reading at home. He finds nothing of interest in the bag save for one thing. My <laughs> He taps the screen, toggles the power button, and smacks the phone against his open palm. Oh. Hey, we don't got a charger! Lucky us! I realize that the last drop of battery power must have finally drained. I'm probably lucky for that fact. If you found a certain things on my phone, I might be in trouble. It's not likely that I keep corpse photos on there. That's my what's what my collection of burner phones is for. But there are certain things that would be incriminating if they fell into his hands. My noise chat log with Kojiro, for starters. And then there are the images of Aoi and Tomoe. And that famous singer that had her phone hacked and her private photos uploaded on the net. Oh, damn, girl! This girl's, uh... <laughs> this girl's keeping some, uh, <coughs> material for later. <laughs> Owie knows I have her photos. She's okay with it. Tomoe, Tomoe doesn't know about hers. That would be hard to explain. The singer, on the other hand, was part of a big scandal a few months ago. Probably half of Japan has seen her photos. Still, I'd rather keep my personal matters completely private. I don't want this asshole looking into my affairs. Battery is dead, sir. Where is your charger, then? I don't have one with me. Yeah, I think this girl's actually way more thirsty than she lets on. She got some Tomoe pics on there. Uh snapping a few pics every now and again when she's not looking. I mean, she's got that cleavage out. She's got the puppies out there for, you know, they're there for the taking. If you want to grab a picture, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She already lets it on a lot. He grunts and throws the phone at me and I barely managed to catch it with my brittle, skeletal, clumsy fingers. I need to make a call. He leaves the room unceremoniously and I hear the scraping shriek of steel deadbolt locking a formidable door behind him. I breathe out and try to calm my nerves. I look down at my phone in my hand and see the mir my mirror image counterpart peering at me in the black reflection. I don't look as good as I normally do. My makeup is smudged, which is strangely becoming more and more common for me. I think I've gained some weight. My gaunt face seems fuller somehow and my prominent cheekbones are softer. This girl staring back at me. She's not wholly familiar. Is this Noriko Kurosawa? Is this Corpse Girl? I look like some aberration, some sickening concoction of myself and some other person I don't fully recognize. Does she have some kind of like, aphasia or body dysmorphia going on? I kind of think that's probably a part of what's going on. I think she's got some of that going on too. I don't understand how I could have gained weight. I've been eating less. Maybe the canned coffee I consume religiously contains more calories than I realize. I need to cut down. Yeah, I think she's got dysmorphia. Sour taste rolls around my tongue and I swallow it reluctantly. I feel ill at the sight of myself. Steel door swings open and Fujikawa stomps in like an angry toddler. <sighs> well, the priest claims you don't have a prior record, Miss Kurosawa. That's good news for you, I'm sure. It's a fucking pain in the ass for me. Oh, I'm so sorry you couldn't just waltz in and pin something on me, fucking cop. I flinch at his apparent anger and recoil slightly You're in my chair. However, I remember you. Another incident like this, and I'll have you in for a psychological assessment faster than you can blink. I can do nothing but nod as a wave of relief washes <sighs> over me. Get your things and get out of here. Oh. For the love of God, go eat something. You look like a starving child. Fujikawa spins on his heel with a, for with a force and once again leaves me sitting alone. I take a minute to collect my thoughts before picking up my belongings and shoving them into my bag. As I leave the security office, I spot Kenji standing outside the door. He bows his head take meekly. Care, yeah, I'll be fine. Don't worry. No biggie. Yeah. He doesn't lift his head as I walk away. Fujikawa is rude. Damn right he is. How's it going, Grims? Grims. Boom. 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 Go.
Give a follows to everybody. Love them all. Or else. Hope you're doing well, Grimsy, 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 Grim. That should kick over in a second. Let's try it again. There you go. It needed it. It was on a cooldown, I think. Oi! Oi! So much for stoic, unflinching Noriko. Remember, stoic, unflinching Noriko? This is her. Weak of flesh and weak of will. Weak, weak, weak. Noriko can't control her emotions. Noriko can't face the world outside without the help of peppy pink pills. Noriko, Noriko, Noriko. She keeps calling herself that. I keep calling myself that. But I'm more than that. More than her. I'm Corpse Girl. I'm bigger than the frail body before me. What do my looks matter in the grand scheme of things? What does my ego matter? I want to be beautiful, thin, gorgeous. Kojiro called me gorgeous. It made me feel good. But that doesn't matter. None of it matters. Corpse Girl matters. She will succeed and the world will continue to spin. I need to gain weight or I, I need to gain weight or lose weight. I need to look like Aoi with her small frame and cute features and that bust that's too hard to look away from. I need to look like Tomoe with her fuller figure, her obscene fashion sense and those oddly beautiful eyes that she does that she doesn't deserve. I need to look like Yuriko with her bad haircut, terrible piercings and trashy clothes. I need to look like Mother, who's just like me, and Yoriko combined, but with vacant eyes that used to be sparkling and clear, but now just glaze over whenever you try to talk to her. Boy, oh boy, a lot's going on here, huh? Oh boy! Yeah, this is dysmorphia happening right now. Um... Oh yeah, this game's real good. It's definitely kind of tearing into things now. The last couple of streams have been more than a little bit eventful. Yeah, this feels, um, like this feels very researched in a way where it's just like, I, I'm, I'm reading these things and I know how I've kind of had similar issues in the past where I kind of like, <laughs> brain goes a little, <laughs> my brain does this. And, oh boy, this feels like it was like either researched or the person who wrote it has kind of felt that similar kind of spiraling. Ooh, it feels, uh, woo. Feels weird when you get to relate to those kinds of things. Oh. I need to look like Noriko with her dark hair and her intense gaze and her healthy, acceptable frame. I don't want to look like this skeleton. This living corpse. I don't need to look like this physical embodiment of hunger and longing and lust and fear and stress and anxiety and uncertainty and ambition and exhaustion. Oh, jeez. I curse at the mirror and spit in my own reflection. You. I clench my fists until my nails dig and tear and pierce my flesh, letting blood trickle between my knuckles and drip down to the carpet. I don't want to be you. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I'm than you but I am you I am corpse girl it's what I always wanted it's that sense of belonging that I've always sought it's that feeling of home that I reclaimed after home was lost after mother moved and Yuriko got put on ice and after I found this apartment and felt so strange at first this is who I, I am your hair your eyes I love you don't ever leave me don't leave. I raised two fingers to my mouth and kissed them gently and then pressed them against the I mirror. Love you. Don't ever change. Ooh boy. That's uh Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Boy, oh boy. That's a lot. That's a lot. So how are we feeling out there in internet land? Want to end on that note? I think we end on that note. I think we put it on ice there for now. I think we call that a streamy stream. Go to save here. Go over here. Boom. All right. And um, 
we will not be streaming more Corpse uh, Factory tomorrow night because I have a Sox cast to do. Um, so Monday will be the earliest with which we uh, come back and pick things up. But I may take Monday off because that's going to be five streams in a row for me. And I, I don't do that a lot. But I'm also very, very, very excited to continue seeing where this story goes. So just watch the Twitter. I always tweet like, you know, at around noon if I know that I'm going to stream that night. I always tweet at noon, so just check for that Monday or Tuesday. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to be Monday, though. Like, I am so, 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 so invested in where this game's going now that I just kind of, I don't want to put it down. Like, even right now, I kind of, like, just, I want to do more, but at the same time, that's just, like, a really good, that's a really good stopping point. Uh, but we're, we're going to be without Nor the, 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 the happy, the slap happy adventures of Noriko for a few days. Um, but anyway, we are going to go say hi to my friend, Dr. Doobie, who is playing, uh, Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. <laughs> yes, the poly calls at noon. I always do. That's how you know if I'm going to stream or not. Yeah, and what the choices do? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. Um, yeah, like, uh, let me know. Like, uh, if, if you notice anything different. But don't spoil it, obviously. Because I am probably going to go back. Like, once we reach a route ending or something. We're going to go back and we're going to do some choices that we didn't do. Um, I will be streaming that. I'll be streaming as much of this game as I possibly can. You know, get all of the endings and all of that. If, you know, like, because there is an ending gallery on uh on the title screen so i know that there's at least more than one ending uh, and we did get a special bonding event with tomoe which you know i don't know if that changes anything or not um but yeah anyway uh just watch uh watch watch the old twitter monday at around noon i usually tweet around then if i'm gonna be live that night um and we're doing a socks cast tomorrow so if you want to come just hang out with me rhett and john while we talk about dumb shit we've been into for the past few weeks you can do that too always a good time so thanks everybody for coming out and lending me your saturday night let's go ahead and get you rated to dr doobie and i will talk to you well tomorrow really but i'll see you monday or tuesday for corpse factory have a nice rest of your weekend everybody lots of love Bye.